Hey everyone, my name is Kayla. Welcome back to my channel. So, the long-awaited video is finally here. Connor James, my son, his birth story. So, I've been dying to share with you guys his entire birth story because it was just the most incredible birth experience and I feel like you don't hear many positive experiences and I'm really excited to say that it was just a very wonderful experience. I'll do it again anytime. <laughs> so I just want to share and it's just kind of fun and interesting, surprising parts. So my son right now is asleep behind the doors here in his little halo bassinet next to our bed. So he's over there but I can't wait to share so let me jump right in. So we are 21 days, 3 weeks past his birth. So he's 3 weeks old today. And the beginning of the birth story starts actually almost two days before he was born. So leading up to his birth, we had chosen to induce for various reasons and, you know, nothing too, like, setting aside, you know, nothing worth really mentioning, but just a lot of different reasons. My doctor's on call, you know, he's, he was going to be a big baby. Um, it'd be nice with Cody's football schedule if we could kind of plan for it and just lots of other different things for reasonings. And I was already so far along dilated and effaced, it just seemed like, okay, why wait longer than almost 40 weeks? Because we had him two days before he was 40 weeks old. So we had chosen June 10th at midnight. So basically that Thursday night to Friday morning, midnight, at 12 one exactly, to go in, because they charge you a full day if you go in before that. So the doctor said, make sure you come at 12.01 a.m. on that Friday morning. I said, okay. And my doctor is going to be on call starting at 7 a.m. that day, which is when he'll do all this stuff for me and into the weekend. So I was like, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. That's my dream to have my doctor deliver. I trust him, especially with everything, with my history. I was like, this is great. And I was like, let's plan for that. It's just a dream come true. So that was on a Friday. So Wednesday night, since Thursday night would be getting ready to go into the hospital, uh, Wednesday night, we, Cody, my, my husband and I, we decided to celebrate Connor coming and go to a nice restaurant, eat, you know, steak, salmon, whatever, and just enjoy. So we chose, if you're local, J. Alexander's, which is a really just kind of nice place to enjoy and eat. We chose to eat there. So after Cody's work and football, we got all dressed and, you know, got ready. I was just had my huge stomach. And we waltzed into J. Alexander's, and halfway through the meal, I felt like a shift in my hormones or a shift in my body. Like, I can't even explain it. It just felt funny. And I was like, you know, maybe it's the food, maybe it's heartburn, acid reflux. Like, something just feels off and different. Um, I was like, okay. And so halfway through the meal, I'm just kind of, I'm sweating. I'm, you know, uncomfortable. I feel funny. I was like, oh boy, I hope this isn't food poisoning or whatever is happening to me. No contractions, just funny, just feeling really funny. So I just kind of ignored it, and Cody picked up on it. He's like, what's wrong, what's wrong? I'm like, nothing, nothing really, I don't know. And so we got home, and um, I was just kind of doing last minute things to get ready for the next day, and I decided to do the baby mama dance, which you saw two videos ago on my channel, or three videos ago. And I, I joked, I was like, this puts like 60% of people in the labor who do it, which is true. And Cody's like, well, we're not ready yet. And I was like, I know, but let's just do it because I want to I wanna do it. It's weird. It's fun. Lucy will do it with me. So I, as you know, I, I did the baby mama dance. At, it's around like 11 p.m. So we ended up falling asleep around 1 a.m. We just had a lot to do. And Cody was supposed to go to his last day of work that next day and at uh, school and for football. So he was get, had me to get up really early. So he's like, I just need to get to bed. I only have a few hours of sleep anyway. And I was like, yeah, okay. So I stayed up a little longer. And I fall asleep around 1, and around 5 a.m. when Cody's already awake, dr you know, getting dressed, taking a shower, going to the bathroom, brushing his teeth, you know, he, you know that takes like an hour, so I'm awake, and I woke up from contractions, which had been happening for weeks, but they always stopped once I rolled over, moved around, and whatever. And so I realized these were a little bit more intense, and they weren't stopping. So I was like, oh boy, so I waited like the hour and a half from time Cody got out of bed to like leaving uh, before I stopped him and I was like you know what I feel like I'm having contractions that aren't stopping and of course that stopped Cody in his tracks and he was like what and I was like it's every I've been timing it on my app it's every eight six to eight minutes and it just comes back over and over and over 
and they're not incredibly painful, but I feel like I might be going into labor. And this is Thursday morning at 5 a.m. And Cody's like, oh my gosh, let's go to the hospital. I was like, no, it's not time yet. They teach you the 511 rule, you know, whatever. So it's like, it wasn't frequent enough, wasn't long enough, and it wasn't happening for a long period of time like that. So I was like, no, I just need to wait. I can tell it's not time. They'd send me away immediately. But I just don't know. And Cody's like, no, let's go, let's go. And so I was like, no, let's just monitor it for the next hour and just see if it continues like this. And we'll just get everything ready and packed in the car. So we do that, and it kind of starts teetering out to being like every 15 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour, then back to 3 minutes, then back to 6, whatever. And it was like that the rest of the day. So it was never like a continuous, like, I'm in labor, we gotta go. I wasn't too uncomfortable, I wasn't in that much pain. So I just kind of, I texted my mom, I was like, hey, at like 9 a.m., just to let you know, I feel like I'm about to be in labor, so come on down. Instead of coming at, I think I had her, I was going to have her come at like 10 p.m. that night, I was like, come at 10 a.m., like, come on down, like, it's time for you to come here, because she lives about an hour and a half away. And mom immediately, you know, gets in the car and drives my way and gets here, and everyone's excited and ready. I'm like, no, it's not time yet, but it's getting there, I can tell. And so the rest of the day, I just kind of relax, get things together, try to take a nap, which I couldn't because the contractions, and, you know, cuddling Lucy, which I had so many things planned for that day to get ready for the induction that night so that I couldn't do because I was so preoccupied by labor and timing contractions. And so later that evening, you know, we just kind of hang out all day. Cody, around 8 p.m., it's like, let's go on a family walk, just me and you, we can talk and, you know, just kind of get our thoughts together, together before we go into the hospital. And I was like, great, this will be a great opportunity to do the curb walks. We walk with one foot on the curb, one foot off. And that will help speed up at least my labor. So, Because, you know, I'm going to be induced regardless. It would be great if I'm already really far to progress. I may not even need Pitocin. I can just go in and they admit me and have my baby. And so he's like, great. So we went on like an hour plus walk of me just curb walking back and forth on each side. And... Um, yeah, I could definitely feel it was doing something. It spurred on contractions, and so I'd have to stop and breathe through them. And then we took Lucy on the last half of the walk, and we came back. My mom's like, I think you need to go to the hospital. I was like, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. So 10 p.m. rolls around, and the contractions are starting to get, like, painful. To the point where it's like, I'm constantly having to run to the bathroom, because it feels like I have to go to the, like, you know, I have to go to number two. And I was like, something's going on. My body's doing another shift. I feel different. And I was like, well, it's not time yet. We're not, we're, we're not supposed to leave the house till about 11.15, 11.30. It was 10. So I wait another hour. 11 o'clock rolls around. It's like, I can't wait anymore. I feel awful. And I was like, I know it's only 11. Let's just at least get there. And we can wait in the, in the parking lot till midnight. So I, if something happens, I'm there. Great idea. We get in the car, go to the hospital. And we are sitting in the hospital parking lot. And I am, you know, eating a little snack. Because they say you can't eat or drink at at all once you get admitted. So I'm eating my snack, drinking water, and every like six to eight minutes I've got those painful, like increasingly painful contractions. Like now it's that point where it's like I have to walk around, I'm uncomfortable. So I had to get out of the car, you know it was pitch dark, walk around the car, walk around the parking lot, through each contraction. I'm uncomfortable sitting in the car seat like this and I'm like oh my goodness. I don't know how I can make it another 45 minutes before I've got to be even admitted. So I'm just like breathing through, trying not to pay attention to the time. Somehow I made it to midnight. Somehow. So 12 on 1 a.m. I'm we grab our stuff, we walk into the hospital, get checked in, they give me my band. I've already pre-registered, send me up. And the first thing they do is like, you know, they quiz you on questions of like, is your husband abusive? Are you being mistreated? Blah blah blah. Of course, I'm like, no. And so then they bring Cody back in and we're in the labor suite. And, you know, the nurses are checking me, and they're like, oh, you're already at a 5 plus, and 80% 80 80 face. I'm like, great. I can definitely tell I'm not still at a 2 like the week before. And so I was glad that I had made some progress, because I would have felt a little silly. And the lady's like, wow, that's wonderful. And she's like, the Pitocin must be working. And she'd come in later, and I was like, oh, no, I haven't started the Pitocin. This is just how I've come in. I've been in labor all day and I've, I've had like a little bit of like the bloody show that they talk about and they were just shocked they're like wow that's amazing I was like I know it's gonna be an easy induction and they're like it really will be and so they sit me down hook me up get everything attached the baby monitor my monitor my blood pressure blah blah blah, blah like just all these different things 
And you know, while they're trying to get all asking all the questions, my medical history, this and that, everything about the birth, I give them my birth plan, which is pretty simple, like there's nothing really on it that they need to worry about, just simple stuff. And so um, they're going through all that and I'm having just consistent contractions that I'm just dying through. Like I can't even like sit there, I'm just like, I'm dying. <laughs> and, and you know, they're getting all my history. Now it was time for them to place the IV. So it's about 1 a.m. now. So we're one, about one. So they go in and they're like, okay, time to get placed an IV so we can get your fluid started so you can have an epidural and just be ready for everything. I'm like, all right. So they have six different nurses trying each two times, trying to find a vein in my little arms to start an IV. And let me tell you what, I've never had trouble in my life of someone starting an IV in my arm, but they were having a world of trouble. And they're like, your veins just are so small. And I'm like, no, they're not. I can see them. And they blew like six veins and they would just stab my arm, dig in. Oh, it was horrible. That was the worst part of the entire labor. Like if someone says what was the worst part of birth, the IV, getting the IV, trying for them to find a vein. And like, I'm still bruised. You can see like, I'm bruised on my arm, bruised on this side, bruised here, bruised on the tops of my hands. It was awful. They eventually got it in my top right hand. It was an ER nurse. And I was like, bless you. I was just drenched in sweat. I was just clammy. I was like going through the contractions as they're digging in my arm. I felt horrible. At least it was a good distraction from the contractions, unfortunately. But they got that going, started my IVs. And to the point now, they hadn't started the Pitocin yet, they're trying to get everything together. The contractions were so bad at this point where I was having to go to the bathroom thinking I'm, e I'm either going to have diarrhea, I'm either going to, you know, die, pass out, faint, vomit. I felt like I was going to throw up. It was just so intense, the pain. And it just, and it didn't feel like um, period cramps like they say, because that's what I had been feeling the weeks before. These were feeling more like... Um, food poisoning stomach cramps. And that's what I thought it was when I first woke up that morning. I thought I had food poisoning from that restaurant. I was like, I knew it. I knew I had food poisoning. But every eight minutes is a strange thing to have for food poisoning of pain. So anyway, so I was like, this is awful. This is not like menstrual cramps. This feels like I've got food poisoning. And I'm just like standing. I'm just like trying to get through each contraction. Just like sitting there, like closing my eyes, about to pass out. And I'm like, this is awful. And they check me again. They're like, oh, you're, you're progressed like past the six. And I was like, yes, I know. And so they're like, you ready for the Pitocin? Because we, you know, you're already progressing, but we do need to do a small dose because this is an induction. And we don't know how long it will take, especially since you're planning to get an epidural, which epidurals prolong labor. And so I was like, yeah, sure, whatever. So they start the Pitocin. And yeah, it kicks it to the next level. And I'm like, I can't do this anymore. I'm like, I need an epidural. And so another nurse, because there's like a billion, comes in. And she's like, honey, you don't need an epidural. We just started your Pitocin like literally minutes ago. And I was like, look at my chart. I came in at a five. I'm already at a six. I've been in labor all day. This is not a normal induction. I didn't come in and just start getting hooked up from a zero dilation. Like, look at my chart. And she's like, oh, oh, yeah, it is time. I was like, yes, I've been in labor since like 5 a.m. or earlier. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's been almost 24 hours. Yeah, let's definitely put you in. Luckily for you, there's only one person in front of you. The hospital is empty. I was like, great. And I didn't have to worry about my induction day being pushed back because I knew since I was in natural labor, I could be like, hey, even if they told me to come back the next day, I'm an actual labor. I'm not going anywhere. Anyway, so they put in the thing. They're like, oh, we've got one person ahead of you. We wait an hour and a half. And I'm like, where are you? <laughs> and so finally the anesthesiologist comes in. They're like, sorry, she wasn't on our, our floor at all. We thought she was, but she wasn't. So she struts in and I'm like, come here. <laughs> I said, listen, I'm so scared, but I, but please hurry. <laughs> like I'm terrified, but hurry, please. And, you know, at that point, they always say, like, you don't care at that point how scared you are, how, you know, it much the epidural is going to hurt because you're in that much pain. Well, I knew I was at that point, and I was glad because I was really scared. I'm like, great, come on in. And so she wheels around, and I was like, hey, I've got scoliosis. You need to know that before you place my epidural and because my spine is not straight. And she's like, oh, thank you for telling me. And she goes back there, and she's like, my word, you do have scoliosis. I'm like, yes, I do. And so... I was just like, this is not going to go well, and I was just, pr this whole time I was praying. I was praying through the IV, I was praying through the contractions, I'm praying through the epidural, like, going through each hurdle of labor that I knew I'd have to go through. I'm like, we're almost there. And so she puts the numbing, you know, I had to curl over, which I barely had to curl over. She was just like, just lay forward, and I'm like, alright. I'm sitting there, and she, you know, just has me basically sit up, and she's like, alright, this one will feel like a bee sting, which I guess it kind of did. 
Honestly, compared to how I was hurting with the contractions, I didn't really feel it, honestly. I'm like, yeah, okay, I feel that. And she's like, all right, now I'm going to put in the actual needle and then the epidural medicine, and you tell me when you start feeling on the right or left side. I need to know just for placement and whatever. I was like, okay. So she, Cody is watching the whole time. He's a saint. And so she puts it in my back, and I feel like something shoot on my right side. I'm like, oh, right, then left, oh, left, then right, oh, right. And then she gets it just right. Perfect, placed, done, great. Immediately, I start to feel the relief. It's like a rush of warmth from like here down. And I was like, this is fantastic. And they're looking at the monitors, the nurses, and they're like, oh, you're having another contraction. I was like, lovely. I don't feel it at all. I was in heaven. And they're like, all right, this is a great time for you to, you know, close your eyes, rest a little bit. The doctor will be here in any minute. And from now until it's time to push, just get as much sleep as you can. I said, great, that sounds wonderful. We are exhausted. And so, like, right when the, the anesthesiologist leaves, you know, they take the epidural to my back, everything's set. Um, my doctor comes in, like, almost immediately, and he's like, hey, how's it, do how's it going? At this point, it's like 5 a.m., which he's supposed to be on call starting at 7, but um, it's 5 a.m., and uh, he was like, all right, so um, I'm going to break your water because Pitocin can slow down labor, epidural slow down labor. We just got to keep this progression because you're doing so well. I was like, okay, and he checks me, I'm at an 8 centimeters, he breaks my water, and he's like, this is fantastic, you know, everything's looking great, you're doing great, blood pressure stays great the whole time, which does the entire labor and postpartum wonderfully. And I was like, great. And so he's like, all right, this could take anywhere from minimum 30 minutes, which won't probably happen, to maximum th three plus hours before it's time to push. Because you normally you dilate in a centimeter an hour on average. And so I was like, okay. And <laughs> so I'm just gearing up and ready and he breaks my water, which I don't feel at all, and, you know, I'm at eight centimeters dilated, and he's like, all right, so get some rest, I'll be back in, you know, in a while, page someone if you start to feel uh, any massive changes. I was like, okay. So they get me on a peanut ball to kind of rest my leg and kind of work him into the birthing canal, and I'm just resting, and I'm just shaking. Anytime I get anesthesia of any sort, my body uncontrollably shakes, and the second the, the epidural started, with the medicine, I got the shakes and just uncontrollable, just shakes. And I was just so worried. I'm like, they're gonna think I'm like withdrawing from something. <laughs> like they're gonna think I'm a druggy something. And I was like, trying not to shake. I'm just shaking like mad, like my whole body, like I'm cold. And I'm just, I'm like, I hate it. It's nerves mixed with anesthesia, anesthesia, and I'm just mad. I'm like, oh, and Cody's snapping over there. So about 15 minutes later, as I'm got the peanut ball between my legs, I'm like, I feel different. Like, it feels like there's massive pressure down there, which I could feel everything down there. And I was like, this is weird. And I was like, I bet you this is what it feels like before it's time to push. I'm like, it's only been like 15 minutes. I'm like, I just need to, my mom just arrived at that time. I was like, I need to call the nurse. There's something going on. At least I need to know this is not time to push or whatever, like what this is, because something's different. So I called the nurse and I'm like, I, I feel different. Can you come check me? And they're like, oh, honey, it's only been 15 minutes. You're fine, but we'll send someone in. And so she waltzes in, takes her time. She checks me and her eyes get really big and she's like, are you ready to have a baby? And I was like, I told you something was wrong or something fell off. And so almost instantly they've got like flip the lights on. They've got a whole team coming in of like 12 plus dirt nurses. My doctor comes back in, gets all suited up and everything's getting set up behind like all the table of scalpels and everything. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is literally happening. I don't know what I'm going to do. And I'm just praying. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. What if I can't get him out? What if I push for it forever? Because they, you know, a lot of people say for a first baby, you push for three hours. And I hadn't been doing Kegel exercises or anything like that. So I'm like, well, I'm screwed. This is, this is the part. It's going to be hard. And I'm just constantly, like almost every two or three minutes, getting these massive contractions that are pushing him down. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So... Oh, uh, so when I was going into labor at that morning at 5 a.m., so I called my doctor in the open at like 9 a.m. when my mom was about to come down, and I was like, hey, I, I just want the doctor to know I'm in labor, and it's my induction date tonight, but uh, is he on call by chance earlier? And she's like, well, during work hours, he would be able to, but um, if it's any time after 5, it would be the doctor on call, because doctor, your doctor isn't on call until 7 a.m. the next morning, which is really supposed to be 5. 
And I was like, oh my gosh, well, who's on call? And they told me the doctor. I was like, well, I don't really know her, but it'll be fine. So I was trying to wait so hard to make it to that midnight. That's what, another reason I was like, I'm not going into the hospital yet. But anyway, so back to the story. So I'm laying there. Everyone, like, we're ready for action. Cody's standing up next to me here, watching the whole thing. Crazy. They asked me, do you want a mirror? And I was like, no, I don't want a mirror. Are you crazy? I don't want to see what's happening to me. I'll never be able to recover from that. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like no and they get my legs up into the stirrups and you know they're teaching me how to push and I'm like okay this seems simple enough I guess and we start the pushing process so every time they told me I start to push and um, it was extremely painful down there like I felt everything and I was like I think I don't feel the contractions but the epidurals wearing off or something because I feel everything and they're like, oh, that's normal. You're supposed to feel everything down there. It just takes the pain away from the contractions. And I was like, well, okay. So I'm pushing and, you know, I'm there every time. And I feel like I'm not getting anywhere because I'm afraid to push too far. It's too hard because it's like, I just know it's just going to like, I feel like I'm just going to tear open. And that just is not going to feel good. And so I'm holding back with my pushes and, it's t and he can tell because I feel like I'm not making any progress. And I told him that. And he's like, well, let's definitely up your epidural, up it. I feel no different down there. I was like, I still feel everything. And he pokes me at something sharp. He's like, can you feel that? I said, yes. He was like, huh. And I was like, yeah, I just, I'm afraid. He goes, well, we can shoot you with a shot of lidocaine locally, and that can just help with the numbing, and you can push as you need. And I was like, okay, that's a really good idea. So he calls in for the lidocaine, and I'm just, while they're waiting for that, I'm doing the pushes, and I'm, you know, able to feel the pressure. And I'm like, can I tell you guys when I need to push? Because I feel like I need to push sooner than I am. They said, oh, if you can feel that, by all means, because we are only going by the monitor, and most people can't feel it. And you can always, if you can, you can always tell us way sooner than the monitor can pick up a contraction. So you let us know, and you can start pushing, and we can get the most into each contraction. Because I have you hold your breath for 10 seconds of push three times per contraction. Because they, you know, last like, what, 90 seconds, a minute to 90 seconds each. And so I was like, okay. And so I did that, and they were all really impressed, and each push I felt like I was not making any progress, and Cody was really encouraging. He's like, no, really, each time you push, he gets a little further. I'm like, okay, that is encouraging. I can do it if I'm at least making progress. So 30 minutes into pushing, you know, he'd order the lidocaine shot, and he, they bring it running, because it's like, it's getting time. And I'm like, oh my gosh, get this lidocaine in me, because I feel everything, and I feel the tearing, I feel the ripping, I feel everything. I'm like, this is not feeling good, it hurts so bad. And they realize they don't have the right needle to give me the lidocaine shot, and so they're trying to find the right needle. And then the doctor, I can see in his eyes, he realizes we're a little too late for that, and I am like two pushes away from him being here. So he, you can see he's starting to like calculate in his head what he should do. So he has to give me a small episiotomy, unfortunately, because I just was not opening anymore, and he was going to just blow through and tear everything. And so he did that, and I felt that. And the second he does that and put, turns to put the scissors down, I give one more push, and he shoots, Connor shoots out. And doctor, my doctor barely caught him. He had to drop what he had in his hands and rush to catch him because Connor was coming out on the floor. He shot out there. And I was like, oh my gosh, what has just happened? And I felt everything. Oh my goodness. I can even feel the placenta still there. Oh, I never mentioned about the catheter. So when they first gave me the epidural, they had to put the catheter in before putting me on the peanut ball. That hurt. I felt that sucker it going in, staying in, and out. I never want that again. That was awful. And I just didn't want to say anything, so I'm like, I have an epidural. Surely, why can't I, why can't I feel this? <laughs> it was so painful. And so they take it out right before you push, which I felt as well. Hated that catheter. I was only, before it was time to push, when they took it out, I only had the catheter for 30 minutes total. Like, so silly. I can hold my pee that long. <laughs> but anyway, so Connor shoots out. He, doctor, my doctor's got him. He's cleaning his face, making sure he can breathe at the suction bulb. He looks at his foot immediately. The nurse takes him, puts his hat on, you know, makes sure he's got a diaper on, and they immediately put him on my chest. And Cody and I are just in shock. Cody is so happy. He's laughing. He's like, like, oh my gosh, we did it. And he's holding my hand. We're looking at each other. And I'm just looking down at this human just being placed on my chest. And I'm like, who's this? <laughs> like... What's happening here? Is this really happening for me? Like, 
You just placed this human on me that I supposedly birthed. Birthed. I didn't even think would really come out. I didn't really think that. It's like, is there really a baby in there? And how did he come out? And so I'm just sitting there like, what is happening? He's on my chest. Cody cuts the cord. And then as I'm like, you know, taking it all in, doctor told, tells me to, I need to push again for the placenta delivery. I was like, all right. It was like five minutes later if that. So I push. Easily placenta comes out. He holds it up. It's just this massive organ. And it's like, oh my. And so he said everything looked good at the placenta. He puts it in a bowl over there for everyone to look at and inspect all their weird doctor things. And Cody was just in shock that it was even so big. And he watched the whole birth. I don't know how he did it. I would be just traumatized. And I was like, Cody, why did you do that? But they were having conversations the whole time I'm pushing because I was just in the zone. I'm like trying not to die and I'm figuring life out and they're just having a blast. And Cody's like, look at that. And my doctor's like, yeah, come over here and look at this. Crazy. So anyway, Connor's on my chest and I'm just in shock. And they immediately start try trying to get him to breastfeed and he's ready. And I got him to latch really well, but I don't know what if there's anything coming out to be honest. But we just sat there for an hour and just took him in and my mom left the room at that point taking lots of pictures and videos of the whole thing. She just gave us a moment. So I was doing skin to skin, just taking in everything. He was just beautiful. I definitely had the love at first sight thing, but it was just so surreal it almost felt like it wasn't happening to me. It was just the strangest feeling. And he was born at 7, 10 a.m. And so, I mean, just so quickly, if you count the time from when the epidural and, and Pitocin started to, to the time he was born was only like two and a half hours total. And just insane. And it's like, wow. So it was like 24, 26 hours total from waking up from contractions to when he was here. And it would have been a lot longer, I think, if we hadn't have gotten the small bits of Pitocin, which honestly, I don't know if that would have really made much difference with timing, but... He was finally here and they finally took him off me after the hour mark, weighed him, he was seven and a half pounds exactly, they measured him 20, and a half, 20 inches long, and just so perfect. They did his shots, they did a footprint, his left foot wasn't as nearly severe club foot as we thought, which was wonderful, such a blessing, and you know, the second he came out he was screaming, which is a great sign to hear when they were crying and screaming. And, you know, you know, he was comforted immediately when he was put on my chest. He recognized me and Cody's voices. I mean, we were just in awe. And it's the greatest feeling in the whole world. And knowing that it's like, that's my son. And, oh, what do we do next? <laughs> like, we have to take care of him. Like, oh, my goodness. Every little thing. It's like, is he all right? Is he breathing? Is he we're like, he's, he's just, he was perfect. He had hair that was my color right now, which is strange because... Cody was born with blonde white hair and I was born with no hair which was really blonde until I got to be about this point in life and it started to turn brown. So I was very confused why he had brown hair. It's like, okay, well, that's strange. But he's got the beautiful blue eyes and his hair is already getting lighter so it will turn to that blonde like me and Cody. And he's got my, my hands, my mouth, my chin dimple, it, the ultrasound was right, he does look like me from the chin. He has my lips, he has Cody's like little divot here under his nose, Cody's nose, perfect little nose, Cody's eyes, um, Cody's ears, hairline, my hair color, um, Cody's hair texture because my hair is very wavy, this is natural, um, he had just big feet. He has Cody's toenails, but my toes, like they go into the stair steps instead of like the second toe being taller than the big toe. And just seeing every inch of him was amazing. Just like so surreal just to pick apart, that's me, that's him, that's me, and everything. So they take Connor, oh, you know, to continue doing the checks on him. And, you know, an hour after birth, they have me get up and go to the bathroom. And I was like, okay, sure, whatever. And they have to like weigh everything you pee out and bleed out. And I didn't bleed hardly at all. And I felt really good. And my right leg was still numb from the epidural. So they're like, all right, get out of bed. And I was like, I can't feel my leg still. And they're like, oh, it'll be fine. Lock your knees. I'm like, all right. So I like lock my knees. I'm like waddling to the bathroom, trying not to fall over. And <laughs> so I go to the bathroom. And then they immediately like get me all set situated with like the whole postpartum ice packs and dermaplast and tux pads and everything. They get me in the wheelchair and they wheel me immediately downstairs with Connor. Um, was he in my arms? I think he was in my arms. They make us put a mask on in the hallways, which is really strange. 
and we get to the recovery room which is like a fourth of the size of the labor room and they get Connor in his little bat like clear bassinet and they're trying to get me situated in the bed and um, they do the uterine push uh, massages which is pushing as hard as they can to get the clots out which didn't hurt me at all like I everyone said it was the worst pain ever and I didn't even feel it the entire like 15 times I did it and so for the rest of this day we stayed two days in the postpartum wing they did constant checks on me and Connor making sure our blood pressures are good our temperatures everything and my bleeding after labor stopped um, immediately two days after delivery like I haven't bled since and I was not even sore after delivery, which shocked my doctor. I was like, no, really, I'm not trying to be a superwoman or something, but like, or pretend. I literally feel normal. Like, I never gave birth. I was so blessed. And, oh, while I was uh, still after giving birth and holding Connor, I felt my doctor stitch me up. Because, once again, like, they still have the epidural running, but I felt everything down there, which is so weird. I felt him stitch me up. I'll just let that sink in there. Oh my goodness. I felt them stitch me up. That was awful. I hope no one experiences that. Anyway, back to where we were at. So, <laughs> we're in the, the postpartum wing. They check on you every like 30 minutes for the entire two days we were there. So we literally got zero sleep. I was running on more than 72 hours of just not sleeping. Truly. And I never felt so ill in my life for not sleeping and Connor wasn't sleeping and he was screaming. His umbilical cord fell off at three days by the way. Very strange. They said it was normal because it looked great. Whatever. We had his first pediatrician appointment that first day. He only lost half a pound before leaving the hospital, gained it back plus some um, four days after birth and then a week after birth he was already at nine pounds. Crazy. Crazy. My milk must be working. And my milk came in at three days postpartum. Crazy, crazy. Breastfeeding was a real tough journey until the five day mark when I got over that and it was much better. But I was raw and bleeding and it hurt, but I made it and he is a champ and loves to eat. But yeah, so we breastfed constantly in the little postpartum wing. They checked on me, bleeding was great. I had no soreness, I could sit, I could move around. They were shocked, they're like, oh, most people that just gave birth in our wing here aren't moving around like that. And I was like, why not? And they're like, well, because they're in pain. And I was like, oh, I'm not in pain. No medicine, I th think I took like, they had like this hospital Advil for me, like to take every like 10 hours and I didn't really need it but took it anyway. And then I just ate snacks and trying to get everything established as a new family, learning how to diaper change, learning the breastfeeding, learning you know how to go to the bathroom. I gave myself my sh own shower two hours after birth and just figuring everything out. And you know, they had at first have to weigh your pads to make sure you're not bleeding too much. Which And my epidural site was great. Like it didn't know like fluid leaked out or blood because they say like spinal fluid can leak out afterwards. And I didn't have any of that. And my stomach looked six months pregnant at, right after birth. The next day, five months. The next day, four. And from here on out, and it's, I'm three weeks postpartum, <clears throat> my stomach has looked three months pregnant. And I'm pretty much pretty much back to normal and I've lost 20 pounds and I have 12 left to go so that's not bad at all and that was just that's not through trying like that you know immediately after birth I lost 12 pounds and I've lost more just through just watching what I'm eating but also breastfeeding and he is doing fantastic obviously <laughs> with his weight and everything but so that's my birth story and I had a fantastic experience and could not believe how well it went. I'm scared because how can the next experience with my our next kid even top that? But God answered a prayer because I was so in turmoil about induction. I didn't. Know what the right answer was, and I didn't want to put him in distress if I didn't have to, but I also had all the reasons to induce. And I was like, I wish I would just go into labor naturally, but then you'd have to suffer through much longer before they even admit you into the hospital. And I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm wishing. And so it was honestly the most perfect scenario it could have ever been. Going in so far into natural labor, I didn't have to suffer longer than I needed to, went in, and then with induction didn't have to be induced for hours and hours on end either. So, because I was already progressed to a certain point and they didn't have to use much, much Pitocin at all, which can stress the baby. And I mean, I couldn't have dreamed or prayed for a better experience. And I thank God so much for giving me such a wonderful, non-traumatic experience. 
and you know just how wonderful everything planned out and went and I got my doctor my mom was there it was just very relaxed plan like got on the dream day is born June 10th 2022 like it just couldn't have been per more perfect um, <clears throat> the epidural went well even the IV placing is no big deal recovery was fantastic I didn't hemorrhage no none of my fears happened and God just watched over me and I just prayed through each hurdle and each thing to get through and you know being three weeks postpartum I still got three more weeks to go to feel like completely normal and I I like feel amazing and it's been so hard for me to stay still and calm and rest because I've felt normal since an hour after delivery or less and it's just been hard for me to remind myself to slow down I had been so worried about being induced of making the right decision and I was just hoping something would happen and God would help me and or I'd have a sign of what to do and it did and he was not a huge baby it just was so perfect but I just want to get on and share with you my birth story and hope I didn't leave out any parts but it was all just fantastic and now I'm just at home and soaking in all the newborn cuddles and snuggles and he's not sleeping through the night but he sleeps one and a half to two hour stretches <laughs> mostly through the night <laughs> And we're just loving every minute, and I can't wait to share more updates on him. And you know, we're, I'm gonna do a postpartum, and um, I'm gonna do monthly updates on his progress. And we're about at the one month mark anyway. In about a week to nine days from now, I'm just gonna get back on here and do a month update. Lucy's adjusting really well. She's a great protective big sister, and we're just loving every second of being a family of three plus Lucy, and taking him on stroller walks and showing him off. And I'm just so blessed to be in this part of my life that I've looked forward to for so long. But anyway, see you guys later. Bye.